Hi everyone, my name is Dave Norris. I'm a developer advocate at MuleSoft. And in this video, I'm going to be walking through a commonly asked question, which is how can I get changes out of Salesforce without doing periodic API polling so I can send them to downstream external systems? So we've created a brand new tutorial called subscribing to change data capture events with the Salesforce connector. What I'm going to be walking you through is really a high level architecture where we're going to be stepping into Salesforce and we're going to set up the ability to publish changes to specific objects. And we're going to be picking the contact object in Salesforce. And we're going to ask Salesforce to publish changes to that object to a shared message bus. The second part of the tutorial, we're going to create a brand new Mule project and we're going to use the Salesforce connector and the replay channel listener operation to subscribe to those changes. And the third part is we're going to tie it all together. We're going to run the project and we're going to inspect the payload that comes from Salesforce. And once you know that, you'll be able to use one of hundreds of other connectors to push them down to the downstream system of your choice. So without further ado, let's get started with part one. Okay, so part one is the Salesforce setup. So in terms of prerequisites, we need to sign up for a Salesforce Developer Edition org. So if you head over to developer.salesforce.com forward slash sign up, you can sign up for a full featured copy of the platform for free, and it doesn't expire as long as you use it. You just need to give it a unique username and fill in the other required fields, and it will send you the ability to, to set your password and get a Salesforce security token. Once you've received the email from Salesforce, you'll be able to log into your developer edition org and it will look something like this. Now to set up the ability to publish change data capture events, you'll need to open up the cog in the top right hand corner and select setup. Then in the quick find box, you can type in change data capture, which is found under integrations. And typically, if it's a brand new org, you won't have anything in the selected entities. For this tutorial, we want to make sure that we have contact selected. So select contact and click save. And that's all we need for this first step of the tutorial. We're now publishing changes to contact. So whenever someone creates, updates, or deletes contacts, uh, an event is now available on a shared message bus. Let's move on to step two and create our Mule project. Okay, so let's talk about some of the prerequisites for step two. We'll be using two utilities you'll need to download. The first is AnyPoint Studio. So if you navigate to mulesoft.com forward slash studio, you'll be taken to a page where you can download the IDE we'll be using for today's tutorial. And if you've been following the Get It Started series of tutorials we have available online, you'll know that keeping your credentials secure is a best practice. So you'll also need to download the secure properties tool jar file, also linked in the video and in the tutorial. Okay, so with everything downloaded, let's open up AnyPoint Studio. Okay, so assuming you've downloaded AnyPoint Studio and installed it, when you open it for the first time, you'll have a blank canvas like this. And we're going to go ahead and create a new Mule project by clicking the link. And we'll call this project Salesforce Change Data Capture, or CDC for short. If you've been following our Getting Started series of tutorials, you'll know that there are two things I should consider doing with new projects. The first thing is I need a, a space where, as I build out multiple Mules or flows, I need a place where I can share things like error handling and connector configuration details and properties files. So I do that by under source main mule, creating a new mule configuration file. And we'll put a placeholder that we'll call global because it will store the global properties we'll be sharing amongst all of our flows. And the second thing we should consider setting up uh, are externalizing aspects of our mule application. So the Salesforce details I have to log in 
will change based on whether it's development, test, or prod. So under source main resources, by creating a new file, I can specify a naming convention that's an environment, in this case, local. The fact that I want to secure the information in this file because passwords and tokens should not be stored in plain text. And be able to specify the Salesforce system and a series of properties that I can expose and then create files later on for each environment. Now, password and token are sensitive and I need to encrypt them using the other tool we downloaded. So once you download the jar file, if you open a command prompt to the same location, you then get access to a tool that allows you to encrypt a string using an encryption algorithm or using one called Blowfish. As a developer, you just need to specify the encryption key and the string you want to encrypt. So you need to run this algorithm with a encryption key that you choose for your Salesforce password and your Salesforce token, security token. And when you run it, you'll get an encrypted string like this that we then need to copy back into our secure YAML file. So go ahead and do this for your password and your security token, and I'll meet you back at the YAML file. Okay, so as you can see, we're back in our local.secure.yaml file, and you can see if I zoom in, I've now encrypted my password and token, and I'm using the syntax exclamation point, open square brackets, the encrypted value, and then close square brackets. So once you've encrypted your values, paste them back into the file here, and you should end up with something that looks roughly like this. Now what we need to do is let our Mule application know how, they, how it can read this file and decrypt these values. So we do that by going to global.xml, search and exchange, and we'll search for Mule Secure Properties Extension, which is the top one here. We'll add it to our project and click on Finish. So whilst I'm still in global.xml, I can now add a global element. So I'll hit the Create button. And I've now got one available called the Secure Properties Configuration. So what this allows me to do is now point my Mule application to the files I'm creating. So the very first thing we need to do is specify the file location. So this is where we're introducing how we externalize aspects of our implementation by using a variable. So we use uh, a property we can set at runtime called environment or env, which will point to local.secure.yaml. So that way, as I move through the development life cycles, I can just change the property at runtime to dev, and it will then read the dev.secure.yaml file. I then need to specify a property that's read at runtime that specifies the encryption key I used in the command line prompt. And I'll call this encryption.key. We'll set this uh, later on in the tutorial. The algorithm we used was Blowfish, and then I can go ahead and click Save. The only other thing I need to do is add the encryption key. Since it's going to be a property available in Runtime Manager, to allow my implementation to hide that implementation and that string, I'll add the encryption.key as a secure property to mule-artifact.json. That is now the foundation of our Mule application, and we can go ahead to add the Salesforce connector. Okay, to add the Salesforce connector, we'll head back to the Salesforce-CDC Mule flow and we'll go to search and exchange in the mule palette and we'll search for the salesforce connector and we're looking to add the salesforce connector dash mule 4 so we'll hit add and finish and what you'll see in your mule palette 
is you'll see not only is the Salesforce module been added, but you get access to all of the operations in the connector. So this is your view into pushing data into Salesforce and extracting data out of Salesforce. And what we'll be using today is the replay channel listener operation. So we're going to drag that onto our canvas. The first thing we're going to need is to tell our mule application how it can connect to Salesforce. And I'm going to do that by configuring the connector configuration under global.xml. So head back to global.xml, click create, search for the Salesforce config connector configuration. And this is where we're going to specify the property file we set up earlier. So now we have a secure properties config. We can use secure colon colon to access the values in the file within that configuration. So we need to set up one for username. Got one here for password. Token and auth URL. So click on OK save the file and head back to Salesforce CDC. And you'll see that this flow now has the connector configuration populated for the replay channel listener. I just need to specify the streaming channel, which for CDC events comes with the same syntax. It's forward slash data, forward slash name of the object. So we set up contact and change event. So if you set this up for account, it would be forward slash data forward slash account change event and replay options. So using the replay channel listener allows you to replay events from the event bus that Salesforce has based on a numeric value it sets. So if your mule application stops for any reason, you can replay from the last replay ID if you choose. So we'll save that. And now we're going to add a logger. So in the mule palette, I'm going to drag a logger in. And all I'm simply going to do is change the message to output the payload that comes in from Salesforce as JSON, just to make it formatted a little bit nicer. Now, before I run this, I just need to do one more thing. Earlier on, we set placeholders for environment, env, and encryption.key. So in order to set those values securely at runtime in my local environment, I can set up a run configuration. So go to run, run configurations, double click mule applications, select your Salesforce project and hit the environment tab. So here we can set up a, an environment for your local testing. So now it knows to point to local.secure.yaml. And you need to add one for your encryption.key. And this is your encryption value that you used in the command line to encrypt your password and token. So set that to the value you used. Click on OK and apply. Close and we're now ready to run and test this. OK, so we're nearly home. So the last step of the tutorial is really to build our project and test it. So what I've done is set up my screen slightly differently. I'm using split screen. So we have the AnyPoint Studio project we've just configured on the right and our Salesforce developer edition org on the left. So it helps us demonstrate this without having to switch screens. So whenever you're ready, just right click anywhere on your canvas and hit the run project Salesforce-CDC. Okay, fantastic. So hopefully your application says deployed. So in the bottom right hand corner, you should see a status of deployed. If you have, we're now ready to conduct our first test because if we've set everything up correctly, when I navigate to a contact and update it, we should see the contents of the payload that's sent to the event bus now logged in MuleSoft. 
So if you've never used Salesforce before on the left hand side, you can navigate to the contacts tab. You can find an existing contact. There's some seed data provided for you in the org. So you can go ahead and edit any record. And we'll make a few changes. We'll change Benjamin's title, name and last name. And hit the save record. So what we want to see on the right hand side is automatically we have subscribed to that change data event that we set up earlier. And you can see it's now logged the payload. And you can see if we briefly talk about the payload, you can see the date and time it happened. You can see the data values that have been changed. So these are the three values I changed, first name, last name, and salutation. And you can see things like the entity name, the fact that there was a contact, and we can see the change type, that it was an update versus a create or delete. And we can also see an array of all the fields we changed. So that's it. That's a, a quick whistle stop tour of how Mule applications can subscribe to Salesforce change data capture events. Head to developer.mulesoft.com for more tutorials and I'll see you next time. Thank you.